Hi, welcome to the 10 minute video summary of the message that was shared at Henrietta Christian Fellowship on the 11th of February, 2024. My name is Don Bolt. I'm the pastor of the church. I'd like to take about 10 minutes and share with you just some highlights from this past Sunday's message. We're doing a long series on uh, a, a year of transformation. And uh, just say that, you know, it's, it's things that we, we got to embrace and practice or we're not going to see much of that. Okay, so uh, today we're uh, just, you know, God's thoughts and how precious they are to us and that we need God. We need God. All right. That it's, it's, it's not like, well, you know, I kind of give them this place. That, no, no, no. We need God in every area of our life. We need God. All right. So Psalm 139, 17 says, how precious also are your thoughts to me. We're getting God's thoughts in his word. Oh, God, how vast is the sum of them. All right. That, uh, you know, you start to realize how huge what God has created is. And that, uh, that it's the thoughts of him uh, that were having revealed to us through his word. God's word reveals things to us that we couldn't imagine. All right. In fact, I tell people when we're studying this, you know, you look back at eternity past, you look forward to a teen, a eternity future, and you look at the place where we're living right here and now, and you can't understand where we came from. And not all the way back. I mean, back a ways, but not all the way back. And you can't know where we're going unless God reveals these things to you. So, you know, there's these three possibilities. You can rely on revelation from God. Okay, you can rely on your own imagination. Just dig down inside yourself and try to come up with the best things that you can imagine. All right, or finally, the one that so many people find themselves is resignation, uh, which is just, they just give up. All right, they, 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 they're they curious, but they just give up. All right, so, yeah, so 1 Corinthians uh, two nine says this, okay? Uh, the things which eye has not seen and ear has not heard uh, and have not entered into the heart of man, all that God has prepared for those who love him. So we know that that's out there for us to, to discover. God reveals these things, uh, we're told, by his Spirit. 1 Corinthians 2, 10 through 12. For to us God revealed them through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, even the depths of God. Oh my. For who among uh, men knows the thoughts of a man except the Spirit which uh, is, is in that man? Okay, Even so, the thoughts of God no one knows except the Spirit of God. Now we have received, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit is from God, so that we may know the things freely given to us by God. Okay, so, you know, this, and these are transformative as you begin to understand them. Uh, you know, and so this, this first section we're going to look at, which is uh, Psalm 119 through 17 through 24, uh, it, it tells us we are a stranger here. All right, we are foreigners in this, this broken world that we live in. And I need to avoid the arrogance that would cause me to wander from God's commandments in the midst of all that that I should be crushed with longing and delighted when God's words become my counselors. Okay, this, so let's read this together. All right, so deal bountifully with your servant that I may live uh, and keep your word. Open my eyes that I may behold wonderful things from your law. I am a stranger in the earth. Do not hide your commandments from me. My soul is crushed with longing after your commandments. Take away my reproach and contempt for me. I missed a little part. He's very, he says, you rebuke the arrogant, the cursed, who wander from your commandments, okay? Even though princes sit and uh, talk against you, your servant meditates on your statutes. Your testimonies are also my delight. They are my counselors, okay? And so notice all throughout Psalm 119, we aren't talking about God. We are talking to God. Everything is addressed to God. All right, so John 10.10, 10, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. Jesus says, this, I came that they may have life and have it more abundantly. And in this early part of this uh, part of Psalm 119, it says, deal bountifully with me. And, and Jesus says, I've come that you can have it abundantly. All right, okay. So Romans 15.4, for whatever was written in earlier times was written for our instruction, so that through what perseverance and encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. Okay, so... Uh, Life without God, all right? There is no life without God. God breathed into us and we became living souls. There's no life without God. We are calling upon God. Please revive us. Revive me according to your word and strengthen me according to your word, all right? So Psalm 119, 25 through 32. We're going to take a look at the next of these alphabetically uh, linked uh, sections. My soul cleaves to the death. Revive me according to your word. He says, I'm dying. Spiritually, I'm dying. All right. I have told of my ways and you have answered me. Teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your precepts so I will meditate on your wonders. My soul weeps because of grief. And then he goes on and says, strengthen Strengthen me according to your word. Remove the false way from me and graciously grant me your law. I have chosen the faithful way. Interest. We are not passive in this, okay? Uh, we're asking God to do all this, but we are not passive. All right, I have placed your ordinances before me. I cling to your testimonies. Oh, Lord, do not put me to shame. 
I shall run the way of your commandments, for you will enlarge my heart. Okay, so I have chosen the faithful way. I have placed your ordinances before me. Again, active, not passive, as you engage God's word. John 15, 2 and 3. Uh, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it. So if you're a fruitful branch, God may be trying to uh, prune away some things that are never going to be fruitful in your life okay and so you know yielding to that and letting god do that pruning work all right you're already clean because of the word which i've spoken you've already been pruned all right that if you receive the word the word's going to guide you in ways that oh by the way are going to get you more focused on god and a bit less uh, focused on all the other distracting things that are around us there's things you have to do that are not seemingly real spiritual i get it but uh, but this this you know where's my focus where am I where's my set uh, a good friend of mine preacher used to talk about your set you know what do you come back to uh, when you relax so to speak all right and so um, yeah uh, it's just that he, he's saying here that um, he's going to prune these things away I don't know unless you teach me that's the next one here I need God I will delight in your word it produces reverence for you okay Psalm one nineteen thirty three through forty and another you know. Uh, alphabetically linked uh, section here. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I shall observe it to the end. Give me understanding that I hear all these requests, that I may observe your law and keep it with all my heart. Make me uh, to walk in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. Incline your my heart to your testimonies uh, and your in your ways. Okay, establish your word to your servant as that which produces reverence for you. Turn away my reproach, which I dread. For your ordinances are good. Behold, I long for your precepts. Revive me through your righteousness. Okay, so we're going to talk about the work of the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit works with this word. We're asking God to work in us through his word by his Holy Spirit. Okay, and listen to these requests. I'm just going to list them out here for you for a minute. These are the things we're asking God. Uh, we participate, but, but we're asking God to do these things. Deal bountifully with your servant. Open my eyes. Turn my eyes away. Take away reproach and contempt. Revive me according to your word. Teach me. Make me understand. Strengthen me. Uh, remove the false way from me and graciously grant me your law. Make me walk in the path of your commandments. Incline my heart. Establish your word. You know, these are the things that are necessary if we're going to be transformed by God's word. Okay? Because that's the part we're talking about right now is being transformed. We're going to be talking about being transformed by prayer, by worship, by fellowship. You know, but right now we're just, we're just looking at God's word. All right? And so I'm just going to conclude with this one scripture. It's in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 16 through 18. It's one of the prayers that Paul prayed for the people that he had been ministering to, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you will know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of his glory, of his inheritance in the saints. And so with that, I'm going to say God bless you, and I hope to see you again shortly on the, uh, the 10-minute video summary. God bless you.